Good morning, Eddie. Hi, Roger. Um, first of all, uh, any team news? I don't think there are any new injury worries were there this week. Team news? No, we still have the lads that um, the long termers that still haven't trained with us. So you've got David Brooks, Arnold Danjuma, Chris Meppham, who still haven't uh, joined, rejoined the group. They are working hard in their respective rehabs and getting closer. Um, but they're still some way off. Um, Lloyd Kelly has trained this week, so that was great news. He's come through training, um, so that's a big lift for everybody. And just to, quickly on, on David Brooks, we know he was back on the grass about a month ago, so where, whereabouts is, is he along, along that? He is building his fitness and his endurance levels, his ankles feeling okay. Um, yeah, I hope that he can be integrated into training quite quickly from this point, but when you consider the length of time that he's been out, the fact he hasn't trained with the group, hasn't had a, any games as such, so he's still a little bit, uh, a little bit of work to do with him. You say quite quickly, you're talking like the next couple of weeks? Into training, possibly, yeah, we'll see. Um, the game, Liverpool coming up, um, I suppose if there is a good time to, to play them, is it now, given they've lost three of the last four in all competitions? I always laugh when I get asked these questions pre-game because you, you, you don't know. Um, the only thing I can tell you is we need to be very, very good this weekend. It needs to be a difficult time to play us in every match. Um, we can only control what we do. So I think the lads have trained really well this week. I think we were lifted by our performance against Chelsea. The last five games we've played in, I think we've performed a lot better. Definitely an uplift in terms of uh, creative play, attacking play, creating chances, uh, creating moments to win games. It's been a massive uplift in that. And the feel of the group is very good, I have to say, psychologically, we're responding well to the challenge that's in front of us. So that's all I can comment on. But what do you make, make of Liverpool? Because they've been relentless all season. And then, I mean, is this sort of blip inevitable over the course of that, of that many matches? Or do you see something that perhaps a bit of tiredness creeping, a bit of pressure creeping? In? I think it is inevitable during a very, very long season. I have to compliment um, Jurgen Klopp, his team, his players on, on what they've achieved to this point, because I think they've been, they've been incredible. They've... They've played to such a high level every week. And the way that they play, the intensity that they play at, it's very difficult to recreate that time after time after time. Um, but they have. They've also come back from losing positions and, and got valuable points from difficult situations. So the character of their group looks very strong. Um, and that's why we know this is probably the ultimate test this season. This game for us is probably the hardest one we will face. Um, and that's why we've got to certainly rise to it and embrace it and attack it from our perspective. You mentioned the difficulty of this fixture. Your recent fixtures against them really haven't gone your way at, at all. I mean, is, is that something that can get into the mindset of, of the players before? I, th I think it's over the last five games, I think it's 17-0 on, on aggregate. Is that something that you don't mention or, or, or is that something that, that, that can play on players' minds? Um, I think it's, it's, it's strange because obviously you're dealing with a, a quality team and I think there's going to be moments, especially in those games that have gone by, that have, have gone against us just down to their quality. Um, yeah, 17 nil is not a great aggregate. We, we accept that. Um, these games are very difficult. You're playing one of the elite teams in world football. Um, I think you go back beyond that, I think a few games the other way and I think we, we were competitive in the games and we'd um, had a couple of memorable results against them. So it can be done. It's just we have to be at our absolute best. Anything other than our absolute best in this game is not going to be good enough. Um, no Harry Wilson as an option for you, for you this time, time around. I mean, how, how difficult is that in losing, that, losing him as an option and when he's done on this whole idea of lone players not being able to play against there? I think you, when you take a lone player, you know that that's the, the, the situation. It's, um, it's a blow for us because Harry's been excellent for us this season. Um, but as I say, when you take the lone player, you know the situation, you know that's going to happen in those two games. Um, but he's been a very important player for us this season. Some people might look, look at this one and, and think, well, given the, the way this fixture has gone in the past and given Liverpool's form this season, that this is almost like a, a free hit for Bournemouth. Anything you go out and, and get w w would be welcome. Do you, do you see it that way? I don't see any game as a free hit. I don't know quite what that means, really. Um, we go there with the expectation to perform, the expectation to win. I think if you don't go with that expectation in any game, um, you're almost beaten before you start. So our expectations of ourselves are very high. They have to be. Um, and we have to have that belief through every player within the squad, the belief from me and my coaching team that we can win this game. But as I, re I reiterate, we're not going to do it by playing OK. We're not going to do it by playing at 60 70%. Every player is going to have to excel. 
Um, and the team's going to have to be in a very good frame of mind um, to achieve this result. You mentioned before um, the positives from last week's performance against Chelsea. Again, that you came very close to winning. Was it then? Has it been difficult then this week to find yourself after such a good performance and you ended up in the bottom three because everyone else picked up points? Has that been difficult? Yeah, yeah. Just just to look at that league table and think after that performance. Well, I've, I, yeah, I've tried not to look at it. I, I don't think dwelling on the league table is going to be productive for anybody. I think. I think all we can focus in is our last performance and and the way that we, we way we performed. We it was a high quality game. I thought Chelsea were good. I thought we were very good. Um, so frustrated we didn't get over the line and and, and get the three points that we all wanted. Um, but I think some res some weeks it ebbs and flows. Some weeks everyone will sit here and say results went for you. Um, some weeks they won't, you know, the teams around the bottom will get results. Ultimately, that none of it really matters. The only thing that matters is that we get the points that we need and continue to focus on ourselves, on our own performances. Can't control a lot of things that happen in football outside of here. Uh, you can only control what's inside of here and that's what we have to focus on. How much will you have looked at what Watford did last week against Liverpool to get that result? And, and is there anything you can sort of incorporate or, or take on board for, for this match? I think um, there's things you can take from every game. Um, game plans, ways of playing against other players. We look at all the games across the Premier League and learn from, from every single one of them. Um, that's the beauty of what's available to us now, technology-wise, in terms of seeing every game around the world and, and picking things that you like, taking things you like from other teams. That happens across the, the world of football. So we, we see what we do in terms of how we prepare for this game and how we play, but we... As I said, the most important quality we need this week is the belief that we can do it. And I think if we have that, then everything else will follow. Of course, everyone's been talking about a, a coronavirus and, and how it might affect. First of all, the, the, the Premier League directive on, on not shaking hands before the match. What's your take on that, given that it's a, it's a physical contact game and players are likely to come into contact at some stage throughout the match? I just I back, back the Premier League and the guidelines they've given us. I, I don't think I want to get too technical on that side of things but yeah of course players will be coming up against each other it is a physical game so um, but yeah I think you have to back the protocols in place and you've got obviously we had to sign the forms as, as we came in here H has it impacted in terms of your build up and preparation for a game the fact that I, I understand that there's been uh, restricted access for people non-essential staff and so on coming down to the has it in any way impacted on, on the way you prepare for a game no absolutely not no no, no no impact on us. Yes, there's been measures put in place to stop uh, the flow of people in and around the training ground and the stadium, but um, that doesn't impact how we prepare for the match. Are you thinking at all about um, the possibility of playing behind closed doors? And, and you know, what do you think about that idea, just in terms of making sure that the fixtures are fulfilled and perhaps finishing the rest of the season, if it comes to the worst, of playing matches behind closed doors? I think at this moment in time, there's no point focusing on that. I think time will tell what happens in the future. I think um, playing behind closed doors would certainly be um, not the preferred option for anyone connected in the world of football because the game's all about the atmosphere created by the, the supporters. But there's no point thinking about that at this moment. My only focus is on tomorrow's game against Liverpool. And just finally from me, um, another big talking point this week has been Eric Dyer's Eric Dyer going into the crowd after the, the game against Norwich. A lot, of, a lot of focus will be on what happens to Eric Dyer and should he have gone in and what punishment he'll get. Is it also time to look at what we expect from, from fans as well? Yeah, I, I, I do. I think it's very easy to, to focus on the reaction of, of the player. And of course, I don't think anyone wants to see players or, or coaches or anybody confronting supporters in that way. But I think you have to look at, uh, well, the, the world of football needs to look at what is said and what is acceptable and what's not acceptable. I think it's almost the um, anything that's said from the from the terraces. Yeah, well, that's just football banter, or that that's that's the world of football. But I don't think it should be like that. Um, so I think certainly it's a, an opportunity to look at this and and maybe review what is acceptable and what's not to, not acceptable, and highlighting it. I think for all the people that go to football because it is a very emotional game and I think a lot of things that are done at football matches would never be replicated in normal life um, so I think it's a good opportunity just to look at it and um, for the authorities to, to see what they want to do with it Thanks Eddie Eddie that horrible 17-0 aggregate the, um... Can we not keep bringing it up? <laughs>
particularly the the nil aspect. Having we, we focus so much on Liverpool's attacking side, having had those five previous game plans that haven't worked, do your plans tomorrow need to be dramatically different or are you looking at just tweaks? Yeah, you've asked a lot within one question. I, I, Try and get me money's worth. Yeah, you, you certainly have. Um, always tweaked, yeah. I mean, we'll always look at every game very much individually and, and Liverpool are such a unique team that... It, uh, to look back at previous games and go, let's roll out the same thing again. That's not going to wash. That's not going to work. You need to look at it. Liverpool, by the way, have evolved since even our last game against them. And that's how quickly football football changes. So, um, no, we'll look at that game. We'll look at Liverpool's previous games. We'll see where we are as well and what we need to do and try and come up with something that um, makes us competitive in the match. But I think... Um, in that scoreline that you've given, you have to look at Liverpool's quality. And sometimes there's, there's not a lot you can do in certain situations. Looking back at those matches, um, you know, they've got away from us quite quickly, just down to the quality of players that they have. But that's not saying that we can't do better and we need to do better because um, this is a massive game for us. The stats suggest that Liverpool aren't nearly as effective when Jordan Henderson's missing as he has been the last couple of games. Um, he seems underrated how highly do you rate him? What is it that he does so well? Well, I think, first and foremost, I think his leadership qualities are are second to none. I think you can see, and I'm only an outsider looking at Liverpool, but you can see a, a definite um, passion inside of him, a, a leadership qualities that every team needs. Certainly something we've been focusing on throughout the last couple of seasons in terms of our voice on the pitch and having leaders that can change games either way, whether you're losing or whether you're winning. So I think that's, um, a standout quality of his and I think his versatility as well I think he's played deeper he's played higher um, for Liverpool and I think they're important qualities because he has a unique ability to create and score goals as well um, You sort of mentioned this earlier but consistency is something you've, you've talked about sort of striving for throughout the season so when you see what Liverpool have done winning week after week after week how, how admirable how impressed have you been with that side? I think that's been the standout quality because um, know that they've got quality players and um, an outstanding manager and the way that they play is so difficult to play against. But the fact they've been able to reproduce and show the motivation levels to keep going, even in difficult scorelines sometimes, find a way to win when it didn't look like they would. Um, and every time I've seen them play, they've played with that passion and that enthusiasm for the game. I think that's um, definitely their standout quality. Mm. Just finally, they've, um, you've, um, you've conceded in the last 10 minutes of your last three games and five of your last seven. Is there an issue there? Is it just uh, one of those quirks? <clears throat> um, I'm not naive enough to sit here and say, oh, no, it's no problem. Of course, we're aware of it and something that we want to change. Certainly, there's not a fitness is issue with us at all. Um, still statistically, one of the fittest teams in the league. So there's no issue there, whether mentally... Um, when the game's gone very tight or late into the game, we haven't reacted well enough in certain situations. I do think the the games, if you analyse them, each have their own story to tell. Um, but certainly something we, we need to do better with. Thank you.